At the moment, a lot of my time is spent with helping customers with WVD projects. So that's customers who are looking to use the great capabilities of virtual desktops within, within Azure. The first step on that process is always really trying to work out what it's going to cost. Because with WVD, you've got two different kinds of costs. You've got static costs, so things like the authentication, networking, firewalling. And then the best bit about WVD is the consumption. The fact that if a user's not using a desktop, you want to turn it off and only get charged for that period. And it's difficult to balance both costs and really try and get an accurate view on what we think it's going to look like. Now, typically, we do start with a POC to really kind of get an accurate uh, reflection. But before we do that, we need to get the board to sign off on some level of investment. The first place to start is looking at the users and trying to group users together, not necessarily by department, but by the way they use their desktop, the applications and the type of use. The first place to start is looking whether they need admin rights and we can start thinking about using Windows 10 multi-session. Multi-session means we can have multiple people using a VM at the same point, which is really where you get the cost efficiencies. So what's going to knock that out is really admin access. So if you've got a user that needs admin access to change you know, the, the way that their applications are, then they're probably going to need a, a private um, deployment or Windows 10. If the users are happy with a gold image, so all the applications are, are, are there and standardized, but just some personal personalization around settings, then we can start to use Windows Multi-10 and FX logic. Then think about the applications. If they've just got web applications, and what we're trying to do is work out a ratio of how many users per vCPU. So web apps, a light user, probably get away with six users per vCPU. Standard office applications, a medium user, maybe four users per vCPU, and heavier users, maybe the, you know, where we're doing a bit more kind of, um, so maybe a few legacy applications in there, maybe three users per vPCU. And we've kind of got groups then of people between the way that they use their applications and how many vCPU we're going to need to power that. Then for each group, let's think about their working day. Maybe if that team is online eight till eight, five days a week, then we can add that for group one, those light users maybe. And then think about the concurrency of that team. So maybe we've got a core of 90% or 100% of that team working on their virtual desktops between nine and five, but maybe outside of kind of five and 8 p.m., we've got dropping down to 5%, 10%. So find those ratios and the actual pricing tool in Azure allows you to model that information in. And therefore you start getting an understanding of what that WVD PaaS service is gonna, gonna need. So put that in the pricing calculator with those ratios on times and user groups. Then we need to think about licensing. A lot of customers using WVD have probably got Office 365 or now Microsoft 365 in play. Now you're looking for WVD rights with Windows 10, and I would also recommend multi-factor authentication, which typically comes with P1. So that's when someone's logging into the, um, the desktop that they get challenged for two-factor authentication. As it's a web service, I'd definitely recommend that. So if you're a current 365 user, check your rights, typically business premium, E3, E5 is included. If you're not an Office 365 or Microsoft 365 user, the new F3 is probably the minimum entry point. I think you can get away with that's seven pound fifty a user. So have a look at the licensing. So it's Windows 10 rights and multi-factor authentication. Then we've got another consumption area, which is storage. Now within the calculator, some things are added and some things are left off. So first thing within the server build, we need to make sure that the host pools and the servers that get provisioned have got their own storage to run the OS so that the calculator will allow you to add that in. Use premium SSD because you want a really fast experience. Then we've got profile storage that FX Logic users. Microsoft recommend NetApp files. Now be mindful that that starts at a four terabyte minimum entry point. So if you've got a smaller user number, you're not gonna need that amount of um, space. So maybe default to Azure files. 
Then the other storage requirement tends to be used as file share storage, which you can use either uh, Azure files or NetApp files. So model all that in the pricing calculator. So you've got a user profile, we know what kind of storage and we've kind of got a good feel of the desktop experience and licensing. Then we're looking at some of the static and also consumption elements. So networking is a good place to start. So typically we have a hub network and then a spoke network within Azure for WVD. The hub network really is there to support site to site and VPN connectivity. So we could use an express route or a site to site VPN. To price that, we need to think about what's going to be traversing from Azure into, the, into your on-prem environment. That could be for application usage, and that's quite a hard thing to size. So you need to work out what that traffic's going to be and size that in the POC. But start with a, a VPN gateway that is, app, uh, that is availability zone aware. So there's a specific SKU, not the free one, it's the kind of a next one up, which gives you availability zone awareness. Because if you've got a service that uh, goes across multiple data centers within Azure, you want to make sure that um, the actual VPN connection can also work across availability zones. Then you've got the actual outbound bandwidth of the user. I normally start with about 200 KB per user per month, up to about a meg. So this is when they're on the desktop and they're obviously going out to web apps or, or surfing the web, etc. So you need to add that bandwidth element in. Then something that people also can miss off uh, the pricing calculator as well is intravenet charges. So if you've got a VPN gateway in a hub network that then jumps into a spoke network, anything crossing VNet peering will incur costs as well. So add those costs in. The next cost you need to put on the calculator is think about authentication. The way that WVD worked, or typically you need to make sure that your Active Directory, which I guess may be on premise, is synchronized into Azure AD. Now Azure AD isn't like a full AD server. So you get that as a free service and obviously you'll have your, probably your Office 365 subscription. You then need to think about the Azure environment because you are putting a load of VMs into a data center. So you need domain level authentication. Microsoft have got a PaaS service called Active Directory Domain Services. That's quite hard to find in the pricing calculator. It's under Azure AD and then there's a next level down. Or a lot of customers go for an actual physical VM with Active Directory and join it to their domain. Make sure you deploy two AD servers and put them in separate availability zones. So make sure you build that into the pricing. Then you've got security to think about. So with AD, you've got all the RBAC controls. We know we've got P1 for multi-factor authentication. You're gonna need a firewall in there. Uh, I would recommend Azure Firewall. Port those network costs because you get charged for what's translating the firewall as well. So take your network calculations and build it into the firewall cost. And something else is the desktop that people don't think about straight from the off is web filtering and antivirus. Now you've probably got a corporate web filtering solution. It might be an external solution that you can proxy through or you might have a desktop client for web filtering. There's nothing great out of the box for Azure, um, but you know there are a few different elements within some of the services you can configure. With Azure Firewall, you can do a level of filtering, but it gets quite onerous because there's no uh, URL uh, categories there. Um, and then antivirus, there are some tools within uh, M365 or people take the normal cor corporate AD. Then the last pricing to think about is operations. So make sure you factor in the day-to-day -day monitoring, logging, network, you know, watcher tools. So I normally look at the number of VMs we're going to have, make sure we've got Azure monitor pricing built in there, for the dashboards in there. We're thinking about logging and security center and network watcher. So that is a lot of cost, but think about all those different elements when pricing up your WVD solution. If you need a bit of help, we're more than happy to, uh, you know, give you some advice, pull some designs and, you know, prices together to give you that benchmark. Importantly, you really have to see how a user is going to use this in real life. So this pricing will get you to a proof of concept and then you can really validate your assumptions and make the tweaks you need to get the right pricing model to take back to the board to move ahead with the project.